Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 9. This tutorial we're going to learn how to collect some ammo, how to display it on our screen as well as build just a little bit more of our world. So, ammo. Well, the great thing about this is we can use a similar sort of tactic as what we did for our weapon right here. And to create the actual ammo on the scene that we pick up, I figure the best thing we can do is quickly explore the asset store. Now, I have a couple of videos, uh, in fact, a li little series about exploring the asset store, uh, but I'll quickly go through it now so we understand what's going on. So the asset store right here, if you don't have this, you can hold control and press nine on your keyboard and you'll be presented with the asset store. It may look like this. It may look like the new version. If it looks like the new version, which is a lot darker than this one, over here in the left hand side, you'll have something that says uh, go to the old store or shop on old store, something like that. So uh, I'm going to just do it on the old store for now because I like this interface much better. But we want to look for something which will have, uh, let's say, an ammo clip. So let's just type in ammo in the search bar. Hit return. And we want anything that is free. Because on this channel, everything we do is free. So make sure we have free selected. And we have quite a few different assets that we can choose from. Uh, one that did catch my eye when I was researching for this tutorial was this one. Small survival pack. So I'm going to use this one because it has this little ammo clip right here. Also a couple of other things that will come in useful along the way. Uh, obviously all credit for these assets go to the creator. And if you fancy taking a look at any more assets that the creator has, feel free to take a look. Go in there and see what they have. If you feel like paying for an ammo clip or anything else, then that's entirely up to you. Uh, but like I say, I'll be using the free stuff. So all we need to do is click on import or download and it will bring it into your project. So if I click back into scene and down here I have survival pack. And within there we also have a folder called prefab. In there we can see we have all these different things. This mag is the one we're going to use. So we can bring this into our scene. And I'm going to bring it over here. So drag and drop that into our scene. It's relatively small. You can see the scale here is set quite small. But if we change this to 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 by 0 0.5, we can see how it reacts right here. So the standard size for most things is 1 by 1 by 1. But obviously, this uh, object is quite large. I want to lie it down on the floor, so I'm going to rotate on the X right there. You can either rotate there or minus 90. Get it to lie down on the floor. I think I want to make it a little bit thinner because it is quite thick. So I'm going to decrease the Y scale to 0 0.25. Not the Y. Sorry, I mean the Z. I'm not sure why I said Y because it's right there, the blue one. 0 0.25. There we are. It's a little bit thinner. Now, judging by the scale size, you could shrink it. It's entirely up to you. Uh, let's rotate it just a little bit as well. Give it a bit of extra something there. So how do we make this ammo? Be something that we can pick up and display on screen so this is where more ui comes into play and another script so to do this let's actually initialize the point of picking up this object now we can actually use this if we want to it has a box collider on it already uh, we'll see how this pans out but the same process will be used as we did with the gun so let's head to our scripts folder and let's go to weapons and I'm going to right click, create and C sharp script. And we'll have this as hand gun ammo pick. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So, like I said, the same premise is going to be used as we did, <clears throat> excuse me, with picking up the handgun. So we can use some of the code we've already written because why rewrite code if it's already there? There's no point wasting time retyping everything out when a simple copy paste job could be used. So if we go to handgun pickup, it should be here at the top of your screen. And all we need to do is take this line of code all the way from here to here, copy it, go to handgun ammo pick. And what you need to do is go from here, which is the first annotation, all the way down to the close curly bracket on void update, delete, and then paste there. 
So what we need to do now is go through line by line and change what we actually need to take away. Now realistically, we don't need the real handgun, so that line can go. Delete. Gone. Forever. What we need to do here is where we've got public game object fake handgun, let's change that to fake ammo clip. And then where we've got public audio source handgun pickup sound, well obviously it's not going to be a handgun pickup sound, it's going to be ammo pickup sound. So then we've got void on trigger enter, and we don't have the real handgun, so that can go. That line is deleted. Fake handgun is now fake ammo clip. And then handgun pickup sound is now ammo pickup sound. Perfect. So there's a couple more things that we do actually need to address here because we need our ammo to display on screen. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to save that script. We're going to come back to it, but what we need to do first is set up some quick UI in our game so we can reference it. So let's head back into Unity and let's go to Game Object. Let's go to UI and let's go to Text. So once again, it's going to be in the canvas. So any UI is always in the canvas. And text and raw image do behave differently. So if I double click our text, we can see what it says. Currently, it's set right down here in the bottom. Now, if I recall correctly, the ammo is on the right hand side. So we need to shift this to the right. So if we select our anchor position over here and select bottom right, right there. It'll anchor it to the bottom right, which means that we can now set the position as zero and zero to bring it over there. Obviously, we need our ammo to be zero. So we start with zero and we want it to be white. So let's go to our color down here and let's change to white. Let's also increase our font size to be uh, quite a bit bigger. So let's have this as 30 and I may actually have the font style as bold for now. Now this comes uh, handy now when we want to use the rec tool because it gives us the opportunity to manipulate this game object without playing around with a rec transform too much. So if we select our rec tool up here, you'll see these dots mean we're able to pull and stretch. So we can place this roughly where we would want it to be. And I'm going to have this aligned center. So it's down here on the bottom right and I'm going to press play. And we should see it down here and we do so what i think i may do is bring it uh, down just a little bit more so i don't want it too high in the scene to kind of cover things around but for now this will do as our way of displaying our ammo count so let's right click let's rename and have this as ammo uh, value i guess so we need to manipulate this UI into displaying whatever our ammo count is. To do so, we actually need to create another script. So right click, create C sharp script, global ammo. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. And as you may have already guessed, this global ammo script is responsible for containing all of our ammunition that we currently hold for our weapon, as well as displaying it. For that purpose, we need to edit our namespace, which is these lines at the top. So underneath using Unity Engine, we need to add in a namespace that allows us to manipulate any UI. So using Unity Engine dot UI semicolon that will allow us to then access the text component that is in the ammo value object so what do we do next okay well we're going to need a couple of different things here firstly let's get rid of void start and any annotations because we do not need them firstly we need to declare our actual ammo value so public static the reason we put the word static here is because we need to access this variable from a different script which is going to be in this case handgun ammo pick so this needs to be referenced from a different script hence why we use the word static so public static int obviously short for integer because 
it is going to always be a whole number. You're not going to have point something of ammo unless you split a bullet in half or something, I guess. But either way, we're going to use this as a whole number. So integer. And then we have the type. So in this case, we'll have handgun ammo semicolon. Next thing we need to do is declare the actual object that it's going to display. So in other words, that text object that we created a couple of minutes ago. That doesn't need to be static, but it does need to be a game object. So public game object and ammo display semicolon. So next what we need to do is basically have this script say our ammo is equal to this whenever we pick up ammo or if we fire something, which we will be doing pretty soon. In this case, we can go ammo display dot get component. So in that case, we are getting the component that is known as text and it is a capitalized T in there. So get component, open spiky bracket, and we have text with a capital T. Remember, that is the name of the component. Close spiky bracket, open close bracket, and then we need to get the subcomponent. The subcomponent is also called text. However, because it is a subcomponent, we need to refer to it with a lowercase letter as the first one. So it is text, but it's a lowercase t. Dot text equals, and then we need to put double quote, and then plus handgun ammo semicolon. The reason we have this double quote here is because this is receiving as a text. It's not receiving numbers, it's only receiving text. So what we have to basically say is this is some text right here, but then apply this number after. So it kind of sees it as text despite it being an integer. If you try and do it just as an integer, it may throw an error and may say, nope, you can't do that. That's why I always like to have the double quote to say this is text. So save that game object. Next thing we need to do is let's attach that in Unity. So we're going to need a game object, create empty. And this one is going to be, if we rename our ammo container object. And we just need to attach global ammo to that right there. Now you'll notice over here, although we created those two variables, only one has appeared. The reason being is the word static causes this to not appear here, but don't worry, it still exists. So we just need to attach ammo display to this game object right here. In other words, drag ammo value over there. So we did something similar, haven't we? You know, we've done the door and we've done the, um, the gun and everything. So you can see how all the coding is coming together now in many different ways. So we've done that. The last thing we need to do on our handgun ammo pick is reference that ammo. So after ammo sound, pick up, play, all we need to do is to reference that script that we've just created, in this case, global ammo. If I type it right, global ammo dot, and then the name of the variable we created. And you can actually go down the list just to make sure you get the right one, which was handgun ammo, double click, and then plus equals and then the value of whatever you want your uh, clip to be. So for example, in this case, let's have it worth 10 semicolon and save. So that's all we need to do for coding. One more thing we need to do within Unity is bring in that sound effect for picking up the uh, ammo. So what I'll do is I'll go into my audio folder effects and I'm going to bring in this ammo pickup sound, which you can get on the website, head over there, downloads and assets, Wolfenstein 3D FPS, and tutorial number nine. So much like we have with other sound effects, audio effects, I'm going to hold control, press D on handgun fire, rename, and have ammo pick up, pick up, not pick if. And then I'm going to drag and drop that ammo pickup sound over there. So all that's left is to attach our script onto our actual clip. So I'm going to double click to zoom in. 
and hopefully this will work as intended because it's relatively small. If it doesn't quite work as intended, we should be able to kind of surround it by a cube and do it that way. So let's go to our scripts, weapons, and drag handgun pickup onto there. And then we just need to set those few variables. Uh, I've put the wrong one. It's not handgun pickup, is it? <laughs> it is handgun. Yeah, it's handgun ammo pickup. That's the one. So fake ammo clip is the mag itself. And ammo pickup sound is the ammo pickup right there. So I'm going to save my scene and press play. So we should be able to see we have zero on our ammo. Oh, and I've just realized I've done a schoolboy error. I have not ticked is trigger right there. Obviously, we need the is trigger because it contains an on trigger enter. So let's try that one more time. I don't think it really matters picking up the gun first, but let's see. And it's still not doing it. It may be because the actual kind of box collider may be a bit too small. Uh, I guess what we could do is increase the size or surround it by a cube. Um, let's try a cube first, and then let's try changing the box collider. So there's different ways of doing things. You could, if you wanted to, just change the size right here, the center, all that kind of thing. I guess it's entirely up to you. Um, so all I'm going to do is just have a cube. Let's have one by one by one. And put the mag inside that cube. Remove the script and rename the cube as handgun ammo. And next, I think I'll leave that tick this trigger, that's fine. And now for the cube, what I'm going to do is decrease the size. So point five, oops, I do it on the Z. Point five, bring it down to the floor, like so. Turn off mesh renderer and tick is trigger, and then drag the handgun ammo pickup onto that cube, and then just set the two variables again. So hopefully we should be able to walk into our ammo and pick it up. There we go. And there we go. So yes, I do know we're rapidly firing, you know, we can fire, 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 and yeah so next tutorial what we're going to take a look at is we're going to build some more ui so we're going to have that blue bar at the bottom you know as you've seen in the iconic game uh, and we'll also add in some more um what are we going to add in some music i think we'll do we might do some music i want to quickly build some more floor here uh yeah and another thing we're going to do is we're going to actually make it so as we can only fire our gun when we have picked up some ammo because as it stands as you've just seen we can pick up the gun no matter how much ammo we've got we can continually fire it which is a bit daft so we're going to change that script in the next tutorial as well so guys until that next tutorial you just gotta set your ammo set it up however much you want your ammo to be worth and yeah i'll see you in the next tutorial Thank you very much for watching.